Good morning. Did you enjoy that praise and worship this morning? It took you back a little bit there. Uh, I pray that you enjoyed it. You went in the presence of the Lord. You felt the praise. I hope you, were, hope you were clapping and shouting and singing right where you were. And I'm praying that God does something special in your life. Thank you for tuning in today. Do me a favor. Like this service. Share it to your page. Let somebody know that you are at church and you're experiencing the presence of the Lord. Hey, I want you to lock in with me this morning. And I want you to engage and a very simple principle and a simple concept that I want you to think on for this entire week. And I want you to watch it transform your identity. And I want you to see your life begin to prosper in every area. This has been where I'm studying. This is what the Lord has been dealing with, with me on. We're talking about better living. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to be transformed by the truth. Transformed by the truth. And I'm coming from 3 John. Just one chapter there in uh, 3 John, which is 3 John 1, is to the elder, to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, he said, I pray that you may prosper in all things and being health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. He said, I want you to prosper. He just, it was just a simple letter that he was writing to him. And he said, this is my prayer for you. And he said, this is why I'm rejoicing. And I believe there's a connection between why he prayed that prayer and what he saw. He said, I see truth in you and that you are walking in truth. And he said, as a result, I'm praying above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So, Father, bless our time in the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's the main idea. Soul prosperity leads to physical prosperity and physical health when the truth is in you. Now, when some people hear the word prosperity, immediately you go into a shout that God wants to bless your life. Immediately, some of you want to cut me off. You want to cut the here. One of these prosperity preachers again, preaching this pie in the sky gospel that every life is going to be perfect. Hear me out. Just follow along with me. I want to show you in this scripture how as your soul is healthy and as your soul prospers, what's going on on the inside starts to show up on the outside. They sing the song in the church I grew up in. It's something on the inside. It's working on the outside. And oh, what a change in my life and it's true when something changes when something transforms on the inside it begins to transform your outside world as well let me give you a couple principles here whatever truth notice what john said he said i see that the truth is in you and that you're walking in truth so whatever truth that is on the inside of you can produce a type of prosperity and the health that you are experiencing in life. Every truth we believe is not what God says, but truth believed will produce something. Every truth we believe is not what God said, but when you believe a truth, it's going to produce something. In this scripture, that is the truth that we're talking about. As a group of believers, we are believing the Bible we are believing scripture in context as the truth that we live by in life. The truth is this, what God has said and what God has declared a thing to be. Truth must be free of the superstitions of culture and the opinions of man. Our, our truth or what we believe about what God, uh, some people don't believe in New Year's resolutions and all the things, you don't have to. But I believe that seasons turn and change and you can declare certain things. But the world system believes in superstition. They believe you have to eat black eyed peas on uh, New Year's Day. You have, there are certain things they believe. We do not believe in the superstitions of culture. As a matter of fact, our past doesn't always have to be a determinant of what's going to happen in our future. Because here's what we understand. That every saint have a, has a past and every sinner has a future. Our past is not an indication of what's going to happen in the future. Many of you listening to me right now know that God has done some transformative things in your life and you don't look like what you've been through and where you are right now is truly a blessing because we don't deserve to be where we are, but God has turned the page on some things. 
God has rearranged some things in our life. So in this scripture, the truth we're talking about is what God says that things shall be. And the word prosper, you know what it literally means uh, that he was saying? Just have a good journey. He said, I want your journey. It may be uh, some ups and downs, some highs and lows, but I'm praying that God prospers you where you are. Listen, that's what I'm praying right now for you, that wherever you are in life, that the Lord prospers you. You may be a college student right now. You're not making near the money you'll make in life. You may be a single person right now. You may be going through certain things, but right in the condition that you're in, I'm praying that the Lord prospers you. You may be in your 30s and raising children. You may be in your 20s and raising children. You may be in the great season of your life in retirement. Whatever season of life that you're in, I'm praying the Lord makes your journey good and that you're in health in the name of Jesus. You will prosper in being health when you find and believe the truth. The truth transforms your soul. And as your soul begins to prosper, all things around you begin to prosper and you are in health in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that if you need healing in your body, as your soul begins to be healed, as you begin to believe that God is a healer, that something works on the inside of you and begins to transform the outside of you. I believe that as you see yourself different, you see yourself the way God sees you, that it transforms your being. Here's the thing about truth that comes from God. You can't change the truth. The truth transforms you. Whatever God says you are, that's what you are. And we, when we learn to accept the truth about who we are, I'm not my past, I'm not my mistakes, I am not my struggle, I am not even my wins or my losses. Those are a result of things perhaps that's going on the inside of me. But when I learn to accept who God says I am, failure is not final. This is not the last chapter of my life. I can always pick up a pen and write a different story because I know the truth. Matter of fact, some of you listening to me right now know that the call of God is on your life to do certain things. And life has happened. God does not change his mind about what he wants you to be. And you will never change God's mind. If God said you're blessed, you're blessed. When God says I love you, he means I love you. You can't change the truth. But here's the thing about the truth. The truth impacts the way we live. You win, and matter of fact, we even live from the inside out. The journey that most people experience is a result of truly, uh, as, as the result of the truth that we believe internally. To believe the truth of God, listen to me, you've got to reject the lies of the enemy his fables and his wives' tales. Here's the reality. The enemy's lies seem believable because he twists truth. He takes facts from your life and paints a story to try to build your faith in him. Truth builds your faith in God because it does not change, and it's what God says a thing shall be even if you don't see it in your life right now. You will walk in whatever truth you believe. You believe what the Bible prophesies over your life, or you will believe a self-fulfilling prophecy where you'll believe you're dumb, you'll believe you're incorrigible, you'll believe you're stupid, and as a result, you'll go prove that out because that's what you believe, and you believe something stupid, you go do something stupid, the enemy tells you you're stupid, and you'll be like, look, that must be who I am. Or you can believe cultural prophecy. Cultural prophecy puts us as Men, women, races, or whatever, in certain boxes that God never designed. But you have to understand the truth in the scripture of who God says we shall be and what we can become. Break those boxes, break those norms, and be whatever God says we can be. Traditionally, for years, even when you look over the course of things, they say um, certain things about women. You need to be at home. You need to be raising kids. You can't be in leadership. You can't do this and you can't do that. And cultural norms will put you in a box. But as a woman of God who's heard the call of God on her life to lead and says, listen, my spirit feels this call. And you walk in your call, woman of God. 
Men, there's certain things that God has called you to do. And cultural norms have said you got to have a big toolbox and oper operate on every single piece of equipment you see. You may not even like tools. You may be more uh, mathematically inclined. You may be artistic and all. That's nothing to do. There's nothing wrong with you. You got to find the truth of what God says about you and break that box. In society, we put people in all kinds of boxes. Black people do this. White people do this. Asian people do this. That is what culture says. I am talking to your spirit, and I've got a question for you. What is God calling uh, you to do? What is deep crying out to deep saying, this is what you must walk in? When you discover that truth, you begin to walk in the vast majesty and the grace and the mercy and the faith that God has laid up for you to walk out your identity and what he says you should be truth impacts the way we live in this way Romans 12 and 2 says don't be conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of the Lord here's the great thing you get to decide what you believe you get to decide what you believe when you believe the right thing, your identity comes in line with what God says. But whatever you believe is going to identify you. It's going to create your identity. You get to choose that, God, I believe you that I'm love. I believe you that I'm not a mistake. I believe you that you made me the way I ought to be. And I'm going to embrace the way you created me, and I'm going to develop in that in the name of Jesus. And you will begin to behave as your soul prospers, as your mind is renewed, as your, your will and your emotions are renewed to what God's placed in your spirit, the spirit of truth. And when you learn to accept the fact that I'm good, this is what God created me to be. I'm not talking about you being a defense or a reaction to what has happened to you in life. I'm talking about you embracing your true identity of God as a child of God. You get to decide what you believe and who you become. I believe that is some of the most important thing that any believer can do is to decide what I believe. Jason Scales, I came to this conclusion. Jesus Christ is the son of God. God is the maker of heaven and earth. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. Jesus went back and made a new covenant with the Father that I can now have direct access to God. And his, it didn't stop there. He sent the same spirit that was in Jesus. It dwells in me. I can walk as a living, breathing, power-packed, spirit-filled man of God, filled with the Holy Ghost and power. Yes, I have flaws. Yes, I have issues. But I believe this. I'm called of God. God's hand is on my life, and I walk in favor. And as a result of believing that, I can look myself in the face in the lowest day of my life and say, get up, man of God, you're called. I can look at my finances when they're not where they should be and say, line up with the word of God. I can lay hands on myself and say, be healed. I can speak the biblical world that was created for me into existence because I know who I am. My question to you is, who do you say that you are? What do you believe about you? What do you believe God says about you? You're all too familiar with what the enemy calls you, but you got to choose to believe what God says about you. And here's another reality. You live from the inside out. Truth, the truth that you believe, and you got to make sure you believe the right truth, will produce fear or it's going to produce faith. Fear and faith are both magnetic. Whatever is going on on the inside sometimes has a way of attracting and manifesting things in your life. Let me show you how fear works. In the book of Job, verse 3, verse 25, Job had this great fear. Every year he would go pray, God, don't let my, my children sin. Don't let me lose anything. Job 25, when he was going through his time of testing, notice what Job said. He said, for the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded, listen, what I dreaded has happened to me. Sometimes your fear will attract things. You don't believe me. I have a dog, and we, we were raised with dogs. And in, without fail, when people tell me they are afraid of dogs, guess who the first person that my dog runs to when they come over my house? That person who is afraid. 
Your fear sometimes has a way of attracting the very thing that you dread. So you got to watch it. And that fear is based on a truth. And that truth is many times a lie. But when you understand the truth of God's word, you'll operate like Abraham. His faith was attractional and magnetic as well. In Romans chapter 4, God spoke of when Abraham was going to be the father of many nations, and he gave his account here in Romans 4. Verse 16 says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all seed, not only to those who have the law, but also to those who have faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I've made you a father of many nations. There's a promise. In the presence of him who believed, he believed that truth. You have to believe the truth of the word of God. God who gives life to the dead, and watch what faith does, calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Faith is so magnetic, it is so, has the ability to manifest things when you believe truth that you can speak to a thing and say, this is what you are and this is what you shall be, even if the thing doesn't look like it. A father can look and a mother can look at their children and say, I don't care what's going on in your life right now. I don't care what drugs you're trying. I don't care how you're living life. This is what God says you should be. And the scripture has to show up that the righteous will never be forsaken and the sea will never beg bread. It's not that you have some kind of magical power, but it's that you believe the word of the Lord. And when you believe what God says, you will speak and a thing has to be what God says. But if you walk in fear, many times, I'm not trying to scare you, but it brings on the thing that we dread. When you walk in faith based on the truth of the word, you can call those things that be not as though they were. I'm going to close with the process of transformation, the process of truth transformation. Remember, transformation is something that works from the inside out. It doesn't work from the outside in. Many of us, when we get ready to change, we work on the outside first. We go buy a new wardrobe. We try to change jobs. We go to the gym. Nothing wrong with any of those. But you cannot, listen, if you change the outside and the inside is not changed, nothing you do will last. Change starts first on the inside. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 31, he was telling a group of Jews who believed in him. He said, if you abide in my word, my truth, that word abide doesn't mean necessarily read it 24-7, but it means to rest in, to trust in, to live in the truth, which is what my word says. You are my disciples indeed. He said, and watch this, as a result of abiding, living, and trusting in the truth, the word, he said, you'll know the truth when you see it, and the truth shall make you free. Notice what the scripture says. Who's making who free? You're not setting the truth free. The truth makes you free. It seems like a simple statement, but how many of us are trying to defend truth? You're trying to speak up for truth. You're trying to make truth work. It doesn't work that way. The truth is what holds you up. I don't care who does not believe what the word of the Lord says. You don't have to fight. Just live this word out and the truth will speak for itself. As a matter of fact, many of us are in self-righteousness and works. And we're trying to change our behavior. And God said, I want to change what you believe. And that would change everything. The truth changes you. The truth works, hear me, in every dispensation. It works in every time period. The truth is what makes us relevant. The truth doesn't change. But it has a way of transforming us to produce truth in every age that humanity exists in. This is the year of 2022. And the truth is just as real as it was in the 1800s, 1500s. We just present it in a different way. And I want to show you how God transforms us so that we can prosper and be in health. I went to Opry Mills Mall the other day. I had made a, a visit to someone who was in a rehab facility, and it took me by Opry Mills Mall. And I said, you know what? I haven't been there in a while. So I stopped through. I am a creature of habit, so I park in the same spot every time I normally go somewhere. So I went to my same spot, but I noticed something looked different. There used to be an elect I think it was Electronic Express on the uh, entrance that I went in. And I noticed that the Electronic Express was not there. They were tearing it down. They were doing some, recon uh, some uh, uh, reconstruction, all those different things there. And I got ready, and I, I looked, and I stopped for a minute and said, huh, I wonder what they're doing. I got ready to go ask one of the construction workers, but before I could ask, I saw a sign on the fence that said, Cheesecake Factory coming soon. 
And from that, the Lord began to speak to me. He said, Jason, the sign was there the entire time. You were just distracted by the process of what the sign was going to produce. He said, in many of our lives, I have put my word there. I've told you what I'm going to do, but you've missed it because you looked at the process of transformation. He said, don't be distracted by the process of transformation. I always give you a sign before I do anything. And that sign is the word that I'm going to prosper you. I'm going to grow you in the name of Jesus. And from that, the Lord began to speak to me. He said, that's how truth changes us. God always starts the process of transformation with a promise. He doesn't tear anything down. He doesn't build anything up without purpose. Before God gets ready to rearrange anything in your life, he said, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And watch this. God always starts in the beginning with the end picture in mind. He shows you the beautiful picture of where I'm taking you, what I'm going to do. And we just say, yes, Lord, do it in my life. Grow me, increase me, expand me. But we don't realize what he has to do to get us to that point. And he keeps a sign up to remind you. Now, this is just Cheesecake Factory on a sign right now. There is no turtle cheesecake in there yet. There are no buffalo blast in there yet. There are no strawberry lemonade with the sugar just coated around the top yet. It's still in construction. But God starts every process with a sign, a word. And, and then he gives you a promise of the word. And hear me again. The promise has a process. But every process is not random. What God is doing in your life is not a bunch of banging and clacking and people just in there doing random stuff. Every process of God has a plan. And every plan brings process, progress. Now, you got to get ready for progress because progress normally produces inconvenience. For a minute, we got to go around the progress. For a minute, we got to be rerouted into a different part of the mall. For a minute, it's noisy. For a minute, it's ugly. But it's going to be worth it. My question to you is can you endure the process of truth transforming you? Because if you can endure the inconvenience, you will experience better living. When the process is complete, the progress will bring with, you, bring with it a greater level of living that you have ever experienced. And guess what's going to happen? I thought about this. That sign that has a picture of a restaurant that says cheesecake coming soon, which is the promise. Once the process is complete and the progress is done and we can walk in there and sit, it's going to have another sign. Another sign is going to be the actual marquee, and it's going to say, open now, ready for business. For every season of your life, God is going to give you a promise and a sign. The signs will always be there of this is what I'm doing in your life. He said, in this season, I was constructing. In this season, I was remodeling. Now, here's the sign. In this sign, in this time, it's the season to produce. It's the season to serve. Whenever God is transitioning you, he will never leave you out of the loop. He will always tell you exactly what you're supposed to be doing by giving you a truth in your spirit that I am in the right place. I'm in the will of the Lord. I said all this to say because many of us are questioning what's going on in my life. If I'm believing God for better, why does it seem like things are being rearranged and not in place? You're just in the process of God reconstructing you. Many of you are even using a word that I see in culture now. It's called deconstruction. Well, you're questioning what you believe. It's not a bad thing. You're questioning everything around you. Sometimes God allows you to deconstruct your faith to figure out at the core of it that Jesus is Lord, that God is in control, you are not, and our goal is to believe what he said because he's been doing this a long time. Or you may be in the season of production. I want to know what it, regardless of what season you're in, you can be transformed by the truth to live a better life. And here's why I want to close here. I want to close like John prayed for this man in this scripture. He said, because I see the truth in you and because you're walking in truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. To every person listening to me today, I'm praying that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I'm praying that every part of your life line up with the word of God. I'm praying your physical health line up with the word of God. I'm praying your career, your family, your finances prosper and line up with the word of God. Even as you are being transformed on the inside by the truth, 
And as your soul starts to prosper, you get rid of all the lies and all the doubt and all the negativity of the enemy. And you see yourself the way God sees you. And you begin to walk in a different light. Here's my prayer for you for the last time. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. Thank you for tuning in today. And you go walk in the favor and the blessings of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.